Remember, you're the professional on the roads you travel. If there's a road design condition that makes you feel uneasy, report it to your company. Changes in dispatch or additional warning signs at locations like that could help prevent rollovers. You see this sign? This information is not for you. It's for passenger cars traveling in good weather. Fleet safety experts say that when you enter this curve, you should drop your speed at least 10 miles per hour below what you see here. We all know that long downhill grades can lead to excessive speed. So, are your brakes properly adjusted? Have you shifted to a lower gear? The only acceptable time to deal with downhill grades is before you start down them. Don't rely on the feel to estimate your speed. Remember that the larger the vehicle, the slower the driver thinks it's moving. So always check your speedometer before you enter curves, ramps, or downhill grades. And remember, newer trucks don't have the same engine retarding as older models. Be sure to set your jake brake properly. Be aware of the shoulder conditions on any roadway. Dropping off onto a soft shoulder may cause the outside wheels to sink and trip the whole unit on its side. Tripping happens a lot on entrance or exit ramps that have a curb on the inside of the curve. When you're traveling a little too fast, the tanker wheels will track inside of the tractor wheels. So even though the tractor takes the turn just fine, the trailer tires may swing in a little closer. They'll hit the curb and trip the unit. A good rule of thumb is to allow about three to four feet of clearance between the tractor's tires and the curb. That way, the trailer tire should be clear of the curb even if off-tracking occurs. An improper recovery can lead to a reverse tripping condition. Let's say you go off the roadway and you try to bring the tractor back onto the roadway too quickly and at too fast a speed. This could trip the unit when the tires hit the shoulder berm or the pavement on the return. Wide intersections may cause you to be too confident when you're turning. Always gear down and slow down before the turn. Generally, you're taught to square the turn at slow speeds to reduce the impact of off-tracking. But loads with the high center of gravity have to be driven differently through intersection turns. You should round the turn to make sure the trailer doesn't have a sudden change in direction. Cutting short on a turn is one of the most common errors. Be aware of soft berms and narrow culverts. Wet weather may soften berms and narrow culverts may allow the rear tandem to slip off the driveway into the ditch. And that could overturn the unit. When traffic conditions allow for it, making a left turn into a driveway is safer than making a right. It gives the rear tandem more room to track the tractor's path. Okay, we've talked about vehicle design, load effects, and highway factors. Now we come to the last area, in many ways the most important. It's you, the driver. You're the one that controls your unit. Before you leave the yard, make sure you know it like the back of your hand. Begin by conducting a thorough pre-trip inspection. Learn as much as you can from dispatch and from other drivers about road and weather conditions. Remember, a safe journey depends on your actions, so avoid unsafe behaviors. Encourage others to avoid them, too. And by unsafe behaviors, we're talking about things like speeding, whether that's going beyond the posted speed or just too fast for the road and conditions. Distractions, like talking on your cell phone, or worse, texting. Complacency, fatigue, and driving under the influence. About physical and mental conditions, like diabetes or divorce even something as simple as eating or daydreaming. Driving too fast for the vehicle and road conditions is a factor in most rollovers. Remember that speed limits are set for small vehicles driving in good weather during the daytime. Adjust your speed accordingly for the type of unit you're driving, especially at night and during bad weather. 
Tailgating, road rage, and failure to plan in advance can lead to sudden radical lane changes. And that can cause your unit to roll over. One of the most dangerous driver behaviors is complacency. In the 23 years that I've driven a tank truck, I always keep in my mind that I'm hauling hazardous material and it's very, very dangerous. Well, a driver should never get too comfortable being behind the wheel, especially the wheel of a big rig. When you get so comfortable and think that you've been driving so long and you have so much experience that you just, it, it all becomes natural to you. You're gonna mess up because something is gonna get you that you're not expecting. It only takes a second adjusting the radio, answering a cell phone, reaching for a drink. That little bit of inattention is enough to slide off the side of the road or miss the beginning of a curve or possibly enough to cause a rollover. Driver fatigue is another factor. Maybe you didn't get enough rest during your time off. Maybe you're working too many hours or you're having trouble adjusting to rotating shifts. There are many warning signs of fatigue while driving. You may have trouble focusing. You may have frequent yawning, blinking, or heavy eyelids and head bobbing. You may have trouble remembering the last few miles. Or you may miss an exit or traffic sign. You may even find yourself drifting from your lane, tailgating, or hitting the shoulder rumble strip. If you show any of these warning signs, get off the road, get out of the cab, and move around to get the blood circulating again. If you're too tired to keep driving safely, find a safe, well-lit area to park and rest a few minutes. Caffeine, energy pills, loud radios, opening the windows, and other tricks to stay awake don't work. Don't try them. Instead, follow the hours of service regulations and get plenty of rest during your off hours. Obviously, driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol is not permitted, but it could be a major factor in a rollover. Even over-the-counter drugs can impair your driving. Read and follow all precautions anytime you're using medication. Well, there you have it. Rollovers happen too often in the cargo tank industry. They can be severe, and they can mean the release of hazardous materials. And they can happen because of the design and performance of the trucks, because of the characteristics of the roadway, and because of the actions and behavior of the driver. In most rollovers, speed too fast for the conditions is a major contributor. And it's one that's entirely under your control. We hope that you now have a better understanding of the factors that can lead to a rollover. And we hope that you're better prepared as you head out on the road. The bottom line is simple. Rollover crashes are preventable. Rollover crashes are unacceptable. And you are the key to eliminating them.